Both teams are ready, so it looks like we're going to transition right into the game now. Into picks and bans. We're going to see a Lux ban is the greatest question. She'll probably be one of the first bans. Moon was still being banned again, targeting no seven escaping. <laughs> no Perfect moon for you. <laughs> Always alone feels bad. Galio ban again, targeting her ass. It's a flex ban. I mean, you could ban it. Mostly Galio players have been playing in mid if you've been watching Korea. Fager, again. big proponent of that Galio at the moment. Well, of course, he starts with an A and there it isn't one of the people that he used to ban all the time because he banned the first three letters. Yep, Concordia getting rid of that Tom Kench, which um, was honestly probably at the root of their problems that last game. Right. If we think about it, the Kench. if we think about it, every single time they tried to engage onto Tristan, just get eaten and thrown away. Same thing with Lux. So it just makes their whole engage wonky and difficult to deal with when you have to reset over and over. Do you think ZZ will pick Vagar again? Do you think he'll be making another choice? Hmm. I don't know. I think Vagar did work well. Yeah, even though he they lost the last game, Vigar still did a fair bit of damage and everything, so. Although, interestingly enough, now Concordia being the ones that pick up Tristana. Which I think right, is it's... good. Yeah. Concordia on our left, blue team. I think is good because we saw Trist be kind of the backbone of UMBC's last two games. Even with Lux's performance last game, Trist kind of carried right. them in terms of damage and, and damage in the previous game as well. And one thing to note is also being picked like that is kind of like a soft ban because while uh, the Concordia ADC plays Tristana, it also takes it away without using your ban slots on Tristana itself. Yeah, Tristana just being very good overall with her resets, so solid pickup right there. Very snowball -y. if you get those rocket jumps timed, you know, you can pick off a team very easily. UMBC gonna do same thing as the Concordia decides to do, where we take away one pick, they're gonna take away the Braum instead. Zach being picked against Zach always being a power pick for Concordia jungler. Zach just also overall fairly strong. Do you think that's going to be ZZ mid with the Cho'Gath, or do you think he's going to probably go top, eh? Cho mid isn't as effective anymore, unfortunately. Or thankfully, rather. But it's fun to play, it's not fun to play games. I think he's probably going to go top, but Varus being locked in. Varus still in a state where he could be picked mid, or do you think he's going to be for sure ADC? For sure ADC. No mid Varus. No, no memes anymore. No more nuke duck? No, no. Faker Varus is the... Uh... Alistar being bad interestingly enough. Really trying to negate Captcha's Ampin pool because he hasn't shown us anything besides the Braum this series. I mean, you have to remember, I don't know if Leona's effective right now, but maybe go Leon, maybe Thresh still works fairly well with Tristana. But there's a lot of champions you wouldn't want to pick into this matchup now. Like, you wouldn't want to pick necessarily Soraka. I don't think Soraka would be beneficial. Uh, UBC doing the smart thing of banning out loot. So. Yeah, really shortening down that support roster, which is not that big even from the beginning when you look at it going, okay, which champs are bannable and then which champs are playable still and there's some champions you just wouldn't touch really and Lux being the final ban in that may be a result of sure not being banned before and not picked they're like well we might as well ban her now just to be safe or do you think they're like okay we do want to definitely ban this mostly just trying to get rid of what their mid is comfortable on so the mid is the only one that hasn't been picked over there. Kara coming out, truly outrageous of a pick. Pretty solid pick overall. Kara. Powerful like his chin right now. Still very yep, good. Very rectangular. Chisel jaw, like gems. Curious who we're gonna see. Ever. 
Corky being picked mid. How is Corky mid still? I remember seeing him nerfed and then picked up and then buffed and then nerfed and then. Corky mid is pretty. Kind of always wishy washy on the play. Pretty powerful. Seeing Swain. Even recognize that for a second. New portrait. Rides though, we've seen flashes of rides on this new patch where yeah, even the riot balance team, pick. yeah, the riot balance team itself was like, yeah, we think rides might be a little bit broken. <laughs> I mean, when you watch the compilations from like two weeks ago in LCS, where the guy was just like one v two ing. That too, just the changes to Seraphs, as we said before, rides. Yeah, might be a little broken, and Cassiopeia on that end too, also with the Seras. Ryze is really hard to balance, they've reworked him what, 3-4 times now? Yeah. So. And he still gets broken every time something changes the mana, because they always keep his mana thing, because that's his whole theme, right? Pretty lame thing, kind of like Galio's, by magic resist theme. The former Galio, currently dead. I mean, the new Galio still kind of does that, right? It benefits you. But, I mean, it makes a little bit more sense because it's like, it benefits you, but there's still the threat of AD. Whereas, magic, you just can spam spells all day as rise, you know, like rapid fire and be like, pew, 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 dead. I don't know what Gally Rise the sound, uh, sounds would be for Rune Relia, but that's what I imagine is uh, Rune Prison and stuff would sound like, just like laser sounds. I actually think Cassiopeia into this matchup is. Pretty solid. Another. Corky's not the most mobile, so it's gonna be fairly easier for a line or cues. Another tier user. Seraph really being powerful this patch, so. Anything that really uses that Seraph's embrace. We'll see play. Now, the big thing to note though is Dr Garen again being to pick to top lane too, which might be a little bit scary for Cho. Cho kind of sometimes struggles with Garen depending on how it's played, uh, but. Cho, alongside with Tristan, are two late game powerhouses, and Corky's got kind of a mid late game spike. I'm looking at Concordia, and they're gonna. If I was Concordia, I would imagine, and I don't know how you feel, they're probably gonna play a little bit more passive at the get go and try to push on later on, because they're a lot stronger late game than they are early on. Concordia really turns on mid game here with the Tristana two items, Corky two items, and Zach Cho. Cho and two items. Because what you're going to see is you might see them snowball with Cho ulting enemy champions and getting stacks that way, or Cho's going to be in lane eating minions once in a while to get those stacks up. And Varus really comes online with one item, so... <laughs> All he needs yeah, well, Varus is, you could argue, is one of the better level 2 spikes. You get W and E, and you're able to do percent of health damage. So we're actually around the minute mark here. Switch to the commercial screen and then probably be back. Hopefully Facebook doesn't take down our stream again for like the third time tonight. We're gonna get banned. Yeah. It's cause they think it's like pre-recorded video when you do that, which it theoretically is, but it's live. Clear the solution here is to put a, a video of yourself putting your shoe on your head. Yeah, probably. Only way to know it's live, bro.
TG entered in my rank game and I never want to talk about him again. <laughs> There's always that one story of a celebrity where you're like, ah, I have no respect for that celebrity anymore. Yep, they entered in my game. Dash also entered in my rank game. Really? Yep. Dash, please. I reported Riot Dash to Riot quality. Was this before he was a Riot member or after? No. <laughs> He's still a caster. Oh, it was when he was a caster still? Oh, uh, well, no, he was like, not a caster, but he was like the host or whatever. He's always been the host now. Oh, uh, what is it called? Summoner's Chat or whatever? Or, also? No, 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 that's somebody else. NALCS host. Oh, yeah. Like, kind of like the presenter. Like, I'm sure he's nice, but just when yeah. you build Magic Resist versus a full AD comp, you're kind of you're kind of not playing the game properly. See, the thing is, Riveton is my favorite of all the shoutcasts. Riveton is just an awesome human being, oh, it seems. I met Riv. Riv, very nice person. Very nice motorcycle. Also, great horse and bird sound impersonator with his uh, fiddlestick ults and his hecarims. Uh... What's that? No. Facebook wants to take down our stream again. Ah. You and BC gonna cheese a little bit. Gonna get the initial Jeez. 100 damage off on either one. It's GG already. They did damage. Yeah, Brom landed a Q. GG already. It's like when someone hits the tower for the first time and like you see the damage on the bar, you're like, this is over. I'm gonna eat a punch of, to the face by Tarek. Satchel Charge actually did a fair bit of damage to Varus because he's squishy. Nothing too major, but enough that he's kind of considering it. He's also in range of the Satchel Charge passive. You saw him take a little bit of damage when a farm was successfully completed. Top lane being typical top lane. As a top lane player, it always makes me laugh. What's probably better for us here is that really Cho'Gath is gonna have that sustain. Right. So it's not negated by. He's not negated in lane by Garen stay because he could do the same thing. The only thing is he has the last hit, which shouldn't be too hard. You're talking about high level players, and not talking about like me who could barely last hit. LS has been master, I think challenger at one point, so. I'm challenged, does that count? Uh, I'm sure he could land his last hits. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, I don't, I'm not worried about him. I'm just saying, it, like, in theory, it's a downside, but it's not a downside at a high level player who's able to last it reliably. Did you, uh, looking at ZZ Legendary? Chinese New Year Corky or Firework Corky or I don't know the name of it, but the Lunar so the Lunar Rebel name, like, Dragon Rider. Yeah. Did you uh, get any Lunar New Year skins this past patch? I did not. No. You didn't even do the event. Wow. No. I'm of the broke. Yeah, I haven't been on. No, you could you could have done the event and you get a chroma from one of those skins. I actually chose Riven, and I kind of regret it, because, like, I don't even use that Riven skin. But then I thought about getting the quirky one, I'm like, I don't, I don't use that quirky skin either. But... Dragonwing quirky, that's what it's called. Uh, like. Dragonwing quirky, good point. So I'm early like Google Foo on my phone while watching the game. Next gen shellcasting. So early CS going in the favor of UMBC. Not massive, but a fair bit. Because we see Cho actually is slight advantage. It's kind of one of those wishy washy ones. Varus actually going to be super quickly and pick up Call. Interesting. Do you think Call is a good investment, or do you think you should have maybe picked a damage item to benefit and keep them out of the lane? Because it's one of those things where it's like, do I want to. Stay in lane and farm hard, or do I want to push them out of lane and slowly suffocate them out of CS? I mean, the thing with the call and two daggers that he bought is that what 300, 300, and then 400 gold pretty much a yeah, which he could have used towards his Gwinsu's. 
like a pickaxe or like two yeah. longs and a boot. Yeah, well, mostly the pickaxe that you buy your Gwyn suits with. Massive damage coming out. Garen has to be a little careful. He's kind of getting into that ult range. You see him tele uh, backing, not teleporting back. That'd be kind of weird. You <laughs> teleport, run back to spawn. <laughs> Recalls back into a lane. It's like what you do in Earth. You just teleport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Earth was hilarious because everyone took teleport. It was just like... <laughs> Towers that just have like swivels around them for days. Is he low on mana here? Might. What ZZ's first back would probably be mana crystal right in towards a sheen. If not, just sheen right away. Straight up sheen. Yeah, there you go. I've seen sometimes, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've seen it once or twice. Corky's and mid start like with phage, I believe it's called. Yeah, the thing is, like, you lose out so much damage by going phage. I guess it's more like if you're losing late and getting poked, it gives you a little bit of health and a little bit of AD. Pick J4 picking up these Krugs. Zack is gonna spot him out. Zack's gonna get spotted by this ward. So will I J4. He is in trouble right now. He is kind low. Of this is a. Uh... He still has E. Zack's coming in. Gonna, gonna help. Try to keep him in there. He's in trouble. Kind of getting caught out. Maybe a little bit too deep. Flash coming out for both Braum and Varus. Braum's W, I suppose, was down there. He had to burn his flash too. Really just giving the dragon right away. Right now to Concordia, we're gonna see them pick it up. A little bit of crowd jake. Kind of beneficial when we think about it, right? Concordia's got some champs that aren't the fastest moving. Cho'Gath and Corky are two people I think that will benefit heavily from that cloud drake. Kind of unfortunate positioning there for 0 -7. Escaping and, and the Jarvan, but Wheezy knowing his red buff was up and probably Jarvan understanding too that red buff has to be up. Just got super chunked by those Krugs and yeah. unfortunately, Cho'Gath might be getting him low. Nom nom and nom nom nom. Eat that Damasian steel and sustain from it. One thing to note also about Jarvan was that in that fight, Wheezy was really patient, was really deployed by Wheezy. He was waiting for Jarvan to use his flash or his yep. E and just wait and anticipate it. Very good, no reason to be proactive when he could be reactive and possibly still secure the kill. And Jarvan actually did something cool where he tried to use the dragon to interrupt the the Zaki as he was jumping in. It's unstoppable, right? No, 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 it's, st it's still interruptible. He he, he audited it a bit too late, and Zach was already channeling. Just got him on the tail end. Which kind of unfortunately bumped him more into him, right? Yep. Corky's gonna pick up that blue, gonna be very beneficial. The next Drake is another Storm Drake, for more movement speed. Corky might be able to... Is it beneficial to have two movement speed Drakes at that point, or would you just want to wait it out? And let the other team try to clear it. Or Cloud Drakes, rather, not Storm. Sorry. Give me a second, fixing something with the stream. I am the only shoutcaster now. Nothing is happening. There is farming. Yep, farming. So you were saying about the dragon? Yeah, so does Concordia really want to push for that second Cloud Drake, or do you think it's beneficial to force UNBC to kind of try to play it? Because they're going to want to try to get better Drakes now. Right? Before Elder. Mm, I think it's still good to have priority over the dragon. Yeah. Like, just having two cloud dragons really denies the Gary in any speed. And it's a lot of movement speed too, right? We had an engage here bottom, but Braum completely denied it. Capture taking a lot of damage though. Yeah, actually, now that I think about 50 movement speed out of combat, it's really beneficial for rotations, for sieging, for even for Tristana, who's fairly mobile as is. Cosmic Radiance was not pop. Alt Arctic Fissure was. Glacial Fissure. As was uh, Chains of Corruption. Yep. So denying that engage. Just a little bit of damage, kind of going, hey, I see you. 07 skip, I think, is seen. Definitely seen now. Weezy has the Rune Ward. Shout out to the old Rune system. Rest in peace. Feels bad, man. I got so many skins though when they <laughs> they refunded you like how much rune pages you had. Yeah, I had four, I think, and like s probably about twenty thousand 
IP worth of runes. I have like all this blue essence and I have all the champions that's so not worthwhile. Well, that's doing actually a lot of damage to this game. Yeah. But Raspa and Nying really stacks fast with that ult stack. Tyrek Engage bot. Big invulnerability. Jarvan likely gonna fall. I think he's gonna make it out. Cassio is. Maybe not. He's gonna have to try to. Fall. No. ZZ lining that thing. See how trying to land those hits. Landing. Dodge it. Just missing the ult. Likely gonna fall too, unfortunately. <laughs> Everyone's chasing the snake. No step Nice snake. flash. The flash might be able to. Takes out Tarek. Gonna survive? Perhaps? No, unfortunately not. However, good trade for that kill there. No one she was gonna fall. Decide to take somebody with her. Maybe a bit overreached by Katja trying to line this. But they did get the kill. One thing to remember always is Cassiope's damage is surprisingly high. Like if you get poisoned and you're getting hit by those twin fangs, it stacks fast. At first she was just trying to poison him to gain movement speed to run away. And then as she was fighting, you're like, oh, I can actually kill him. You can almost see the moment the light bulb went on her, on her head and was like, hmm. Concordia slowly taking a lead. Not much. Still very close game. Nothing too notable. Interesting. Go ahead. I was going to say that to an extent. Cho'Gath has been effective. You see, if you look at Garen, he had to buy no magic mantle. He was in the middle of building Sunfire. He kind of got his purchase interrupted. So he's at this weird proxy area, which is really beneficial because you really want to stop those full builds. He's also somewhat behind in CS as well. Or just 700 gold up. 500 gold now. Garen picking up all that C bonus so, CS. I keep pressing tab to see who has stopwatches and then I remember. Yep. Jarvan. Don't forget the go golden Jarvan. Jarvan in this bot lane. I think they know he's here. He's just doing, uh, you know, like he's 07 scape. He's trying to get his farm up. Love to play some RuneScape. Unfortunately, this week I was all working, so I never had a chance to play some RuneScape or anything. You play RuneScape still? Sometimes. How is it? I need to get 99 woodcutting, my friend. It's uh, still one of I... my life goals is to get 99, 99 woodcutting. Wood cutting. Yep. Yeah, I remember when, because obviously our old accounts got transferred over right to RS3. I had like 92 woodcutting, and I came logged in one day without knowing the change, and I was like, "What is this? Why is my dragon hatchet worthless? What happened to the game?" Like, there's like panic. Oh, especially like 07 RuneScape on release. I played on release, right? So I got to like level 90 in the first week or so. Wow, and you're still not at 99. Yeah, and then what happened- Are you time wasting? I don't know, I just stopped playing. And then what happened is I bought one of the first Dragon Axes ever made, so I think it was like 4 million coins. Jesus. Before the Grand Exchange became a thing, and then after the Grand Exchange became a thing, uh, the price of a Dragon Axe dropped to like one one hundred thousand or something like that yeah because what i i was never against the grand exchange but i remember there was these like players that almost got banned because it was like make willow use like worthless or like make you yeah. super expensive well it's like the thing is you if you were a high level woodcutter and you had a large amount of wood it's like you could monopolize the wood market and... <laughs> speaking of wood market 07 scape taking that rift scuttler no wood involved, just pure fists and punching. I love how you just went on a time giant tangent about RuneScape while watching League. I mean, his ah, name nostalgia. is 07 Scape. Yeah. The good old days. He might get a skill cape, you know, if he uh, achieves Master this season, maybe that could be the skin for him. RuneScape skin? Yeah, no, no, like the, like the skill capes. Ah, true. That would be nice, just add a cape to your character. It'd be way funnier if your character already had a cape, but you give more cape. Like Darius's cape now like trails behind him. And that Tarek skin does have a cape. Enhanced Graves Cigar. Graves with Cigar and Cape. Too manly. Well, this dragon is gonna get bursted down very quickly. 
And Gordia trading that Rift Herald for the Dragon. Solid trade because I think they can burst down the Rift Herald pretty quickly no matter what time it spawns. Yeah, and chose ult is going to be very beneficial for that too, and it and it doesn't count towards a oh. stack, of course, too. So it's really beneficial both ways. One count towards the stack. One void monster eating another void monster. It's a void monster, eat void monster world out there, man. Yeah, I do like that Chogaskin. The more I see this white dinosaur golden Chogaskin, the more I like it. I miss. So what happened to Lee Sin, by the way? I heard everyone be like, "Rip Lee Sin." Well. Very much this patch, if you see like the jungle items, everyone going towards Skirmisher and Stalker's Blade because they remove the uh, Tracker's Knife. So no more oh, wards so on your jungle item. Feels bad, man. What did they did they replace or did they just like now there's no a no it's just gone. So coupled with the fact that Lee Sin already couldn't buy Sightstone anymore, right? Because he you you kind of have no more no more item to dash with. Support, please plant ward as I kick so I can do an insect. Yeah, so you're probably either gonna have to buy a ton of pink wards. We might see Leeson players actually pick up the Targon's Brace or something of that nature. Or use your support as the ward person, just like run up and plant wards for you to leap around on. Kinda sad. Slowly killing the insect player. I mean, he doesn't need vision, he's already blind. Yeah. Literally right, it's being lore friendly. He's already blind and they killed his guide dog. Unfortunate. <laughs> guide dog. Wasn't that Feral Flare? <laughs> With no. Riggle's Lantern? <laughs> that was, guide uh... Poacher Knife. Zack is here, though! Stealing away those minions. Yep, I'm gonna eat them all. Bubblegum Revenge. All I hear is my cat in the background causing mayhem. Who is he gonna be spotted at? So I'm gonna ult him away. Denying that last stack of stun to come on. Which probably would have been chained with the glacial fissure. Driving here to see if they can get anything out of this bot lane turret, but the Trisana wave clear. Taking on Garen, dealing some fair bit of damage to Garen. Garen's kind of scared. Cho's really big now. He has a lot of damage off that ult. I don't Garen. Garen's walk bugged on your screen too, or is he just pressing S and making it look weird? I don't know. He looks bugged. Like he looks like he's doing half steps. It Did looks like in the. Rift Herald's coming out in the bot. Yeah. We're gonna see it. Perhaps take bot tower before Chogath can get. Chogath's really trying to get that top turret. Using that Weezy master. I don't know what the master's that. called. Demolish. Demolisher, is that what it's called? Demolish. Yeah, all it does is like, you look at your turret, you see the crystals, you're like, please, no! Yep. Those Vorpal spikes doing a fair bit of slowing. Fair bit of damage. Damage is gonna obviously go up over time as the game stacks. Very big vision game right now. It seems like a lot of the gold's almost coming off Ward. Ward's greatest creep. So the duel continues in the top lane. The slaps. Dinosaur versus Sorty Boy. I remember when that was at Riot, they were talking about creating intuitive and like interesting champion designs. And they were saying one of the things they never wanted to do again is just create like Characters that didn't have any backing behind to them, so like, man with sword. Like, not one of the characters they tried to do again. <laughs> or like, singed. Yeah, so... Like, what is this? He's a mad scientist. Does man. he spell lore with uh, Warwick or not even anymore, eh? Probably. I thought they retconned it. Not sure. Warwick's one of those weird stories where his rework is super popular. Because the character is actually interesting to play now. <laughs> yeah, it's all like, <laughs> no more teleporting ults feels bad though, and now I can't just click an R for win. Varus doesn't have flash! He's gonna get knocked back into the team. And Karakul that's gonna out, be a. Parasibly diving to side against it. Karak taking a little bit of damage. That armor being so powerful, you see against that turret, he's barely taking turret damage on those shots. 
Oh, they're gonna try and get this turret down. Carrick taking no damage from that turret. This is gonna be the first one. Big gold buff. Or boost, not the, buff. The good on Wheezy knowing that the virus flash was still down and came down to help the bot lane. Get that kill. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and we see top also very low health. We're gonna possibly see top drop in the next little while. Yeah, Choga being really an immovable I object in the top Cloud lane. Drake, you know, the most important of Drakes. They got three of. Man, you gotta be a race car. Unfortunately, no Project Ramis. Cars, Project Cars League of Legends. Yeah, no Ramis in this game to really enjoy <laughs> this, the movement speed. Or Hecarim. Capture, though. Gonna take... Might be falling. Barely makes it out alive. Zach is here, the though. Over, knocking the beneficial. And, uh... I really think they didn't expect the Zack to be there. Or at least if you and see Tarek, you have to assume that Trishana is nearby. Yeah, Tarek's not- no more top Tarek. By yeah. himself. And Concordia gonna rotate and are they thinking of doing this Baron? Yes, they are. They might be able to. Show and a smite make it very hard for them to steal away and secure it away from Concordia. Tarek though, notably low. Might be a pick for Garen. Garen might be- you might see Garen try to ult him, however not. Pick it off, or are they gonna return me? Garen in big trouble. Garen's popping really fast. Cho'Gath eating, and big noms coming out. And that's gonna Baron's be. Baron's also gonna fall. That's definitely Baron now. Baron at least top turret. We need to decide, see what Concordia does. I don't think it's gonna be Baron anymore. Cassio is still up. I guess. We're... As is Jarvan. Tarek running really low. Tarek has to be very careful here. Kinda wants to stay in range to heal them, but he's also in danger of being picked off. I guess they're just gonna keep fighting as UMBC Tarek funnels in. Cassio. Big for Concordia though, maybe fighting off a little bit more than they could chew. I think it was just overzealous by Concordia. I don't know why you try and do this. Now you've leashed the Baron for UMBC, where I'm just gonna come in and finish it off. Top tier was so low, I kinda don't understand why Bob they- might still fall, however. We see minions. I kind of don't understand why they didn't opt to do that instead. It's I think that they, I think that they underestimate Cassiopeia's damage there because she got pulled right into the team. She was right in range of both Corky and Tristana to start smacking them with those twin fangs. All the shutdown gold now, all landing onto Cassio. This turret's gonna fall too, and we could see how much more. UMBC can get with this Baron. It's probably gonna be Dragon as well. Thankfully not Infernal. Still, still unfortunate to give up a Dragon, but not a heavy, heavy Dragon. Gonna negate to a certain extent Cloud Drake, but not take it away. There's still net advantage on Cavordia's side, of course. However, we see Garen just stopping Cho. Cho really wants to get his top turret for that gold, but Garen's going, no sir, you're not getting it. We do see him, however, going down. Cho's teleport is down, so is Garen's. Being Garen roaming down will beat Cho for sure. However, Concordia looks like they're gonna back off. One thing to notice, Garen has to be a little careful. He's separated with... And Corky has the package. He could technically knock him away from his team if he's caught out. Even though the gold is now even... Concordia looks like they're gonna die if Garen's in trouble. Uh, Garen, Garen's out of... doesn't want to be there anymore. Garen kind of realized what was going on. I think they were caught by a ward. I think Tarek roamed where the uh, pink was and they got caught out just a little too soon, unfortunately. Nothing major. The hard thing now is if you're Concordia, you can't really push this Baron minion UMBC. Yeah, they got that shirt. And that was, I wouldn't say a fluke, but they're fortunate because now look at mid. UMBC is likely going to get that tower. Cho coming in like a speed demon. Also the Varus, are we gonna see an engage here? We see an ult just enough to save Tarek, but he's still probably likely gonna fall as he's that piercing harrow. Massive damage. Zach says no to you escaping. We might see a clear right now. They might be able to take away all this Baron buff. Gromp falling as is Yeah, here we go. An ace for Concordia. This is really big for them. Let's really just on a resets though. Coming in handy so much. And Concordia now is Firms Such themselves. a perspective that shutdown gold was so crucial when Concordia got that ace, they barely got above yep. UNBC. 
They're barely above them in gold now. Yeah. You may want to revisit that Baron fight if you're Concordia doing a VOD review after this game and kind of never want to do that ever again. Yeah, like you see this? No, do this. Braum coming up. Concordia decided not to be too selfish. Knows that they're all spawning very soon. Back off. They're gonna go rinse uh, UMBC's drag, uh, jungle right now and be like... Infernal Drake is actually the next Drake to come up, believe it or not. Which is gonna be very good for Concordia if they could get it. Or even UBC if they could grab it too. Both very beneficial for both teams. Infernal arguably the best Drake. Other than maybe Mountain would you argue might be a little bit better? It's a bit of a setup now for your Elder Dragon. Yeah. So you want to make sure you have the strongest Elder Dragon possible. Right. Because Infernal with the Elder Dragon gets a small boost, right? Rather than just a little bit more movement speed plus true damage. Yep. So is this red buff actually gonna probably gonna go over to Corky. Tristana picked up the enemy red buff. Going over to Corky as we thought. Cast though very much still a factor in this game. Catcha has to be careful. Though. Tarek, yeah, Tarek forced the flasher, kind of unfortunate. Cast well on her way to uh Leandri's torment. Cass is very much the power player on the enemy team right now. As is Corky for... Yeah. Corky and Tristana, rather. With equal scores. Yeah. She will also know how to be underestimated. However, not the biggest damage dealer. However, super tanky. Oh, uh, Wheezy Dinos. with a very nice score of 1-1-1-1-1. Oras, again, dominating the leaderboards that do not exist for health and game. And with his show. 5,000 health. <laughs> yeah, he has that big dinosaur again. Reminds you of that first game against Brandis, was it? That he picked you know, Cho. Every single game he picks Cho, he ends up being a very big dinosaur. Jurassic Park levels of dinosaur. He doesn't even have the potion that gives you more HP, so... Or Warmog. Oh, no, he does have Warmog. So I was gonna say, if he does have Warmogs, too, that's big. It's probably about to finish See? off Thornmail. See, now, now you have to have a race between Zack and Cho on who could be the biggest. Link Cho Geth wins every time. Yeah. Unless Zack uses his taunt, but that's kind of cheating to become a giant bubble. Just, just the way jungles are, where you're kind of a homeless man of the rift picking up the scraps of your team. <laughs> the Lone Ranger. Corey really wants to posture around this dragon to make sure that UMBC can't get dra uh, vision over the pit. ZZ crucially needs to stay alive for them to get the dragon. There's the poke damage coming out. It's just so significant. Both Tristana and Corky on three completed items. Cho going for a Thornmail. Oh, really beneficial against that team. And he steal this. No, Jarvan actually going to be forced to smite it away. Poor Cassiopeia. No blue for her. Nope. Unlucky. Cho clearing the jungle, perhaps, of UBC? Very unsneaky Cho yeah, in the bush that he's sm smaller than him. It's kind of funny how there's no Z factor, so like you don't see Cho in the bush, like you wouldn't just see his giant ass body hiding at from <laughs> the shrub. But especially the bush around Dragon and the pixel brush. Yeah, like, I don't mean there's a giant dinosaur in there, I don't see anything. Cho yeah, just snickering. Yeah, like the bush he just walked into. <laughs> so, good oh, warning. So one, Unless two, it's like three. Metal Gear Solid, he kind of like closes himself up like Doc style. Cordia with three wards. Very much scouting the entrances. Dragon is now live. It's probably gonna fall real fast. I don't think even UBC nowhere near enough. It's gonna melt before they even reach it. Baron up as well. So this is gonna be the next target in Concordia's eyes if they want to end They're this game. I'm sure of where they are. If you look at them, they thought they were perhaps a Baron even. They stayed mid. They were unsure. There was no vision on either or. Cordia doing a very good job of sweeping out the vision. So your vision game is very powerful this game. Yeah, so they're gonna do 
do the same thing again where you have the three wards really protecting your entrances they're gonna try and do the exact same thing here or if they could get a bush a ward on this bush where Jarvan is standing in right now very crucial but if they get the picks it won't matter this might be it massive damage coming out from Tristan and Cho Tristana falling to Cassiopa, big damage coming out, Corky's in trouble, Corky gets taken out by Garen, but Cassiopa separated from her tank, doesn't seem to matter, massive damage coming out with that poison, Cho'Gath looking perhaps to kill her, has to back off, interesting fight there, Cassiopa really keeping her time team alive in the game there. Yeah, you saw what happens if Cassio can get on to Corky or Tristana, Tristana got stunned from the... Malefic Vision, uh, not the Malefic Vision, the Cassio Ultimate uh, Petrifying Gaze and just got destroyed immediately Yeah, and even when Quirky didn't die, he was very low from the poison Garen just walked up and ulted him Judgment just instantly take him out Or Damascian Justice oh. Judgment is, you always forget Is uh, when you're, when you're too good, Garen gets true damage onto you <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't even the true damage, he was solo magic damage would have been enough to pick him off. I think it was at like a hundred odd health. Yeah. There was no surviving that. Really, if you lose your two damage dealers here as Concordia, you're kind of in a bind. Right. Because even if you, if you lose one ADC in the fight, not as bad. If you lose two, then you're in an well, interesting ADC, situation. Quirky's arguable. Quirky's so good because he's hybrid damage still, and that's what makes him scarce if you get rid of that in the ADC. There's there's some magic damage, but it's not as as big. Oh, your Cho'Gath isn't going to be the one that's going to burst the one-shot your Cassiopeia. Well, I mean, if he, I think if he WEQ'd, he might be able to, but probably not even, because she does have a Abyssal Mask. Oh, we might she does have Leandri's Torment finished now, as of a while. I think she had in the last fight, saw how powerful it is. But that magic pen and current health damage really powerful under poison because it keeps refreshing. Yeah, we might we might see a lot of more focus on the Casio in fights now. Thornmail being picked up finally by Cho and Mercurial from Tristana is gonna try to hopefully catch herself alive if she gets stunned again by that petrifying gaze. A lot of vision posturing right now happening around um Baron. Cho a lot of health now too, still. Up to 6,000 health effectively. Onto this Baron. He didn't even look like he was on the cone at that point anymore to be honest, I thought he missed it. One thing to note with 10 stacks is he does a lot of extra damage. Gargoyle stolen play probably be Cho'Gath's last pickup. Sure. Make himself even bigger than his 6,000 HP. Yeah, it means he'd be up to 12,000, correct? With the whole team if he yep, gets it. probably. <laughs> Which is enough to basically ult and kill somebody. I mean, he still doesn't have the potion that makes it even bigger, so he's just... He's still fairly big. I don't he, even think he's at this point. He's just working on pure... How big does he have to be before it starts affecting pathing? Like, how big before you can, like, barely walk through the jungle? Which, what a lot of people don't realize that it's also spurred is how much he stops skill shots. Like, Varus ult is gonna have to hit Cho and they could just walk away. See how fast he could kill that great, uh, Baron too. Elder Baron Dragon going down. Elder Dragon up in just under a minute and a half. So, Concordia in a power move to end the game. Still is going to need to find the right team fight and probably get this dragon down. Static shift being picked up by Tristana or Corky. Not the UI anyway. Mercurial being finished off by Trist. I think that's been a while. She actually had that in the previous fight even. 
QSS got... Corky. We see a last whisper being picked up by Tristana now. She's going for that. I guess in this pe point you'd be best with Lord Dominic's regard, right? Because you don't worry about Garen healing because he doesn't really heal that much in combat because his passive doesn't work. Wait on that dragon. If this dragon goes down fast, UMBC might be in trouble if they try to stop this, but it's too late. You see them trying to come in, but Elder Drake just dying so fast. Cho's probably gonna just ult it. There you go. Smite it away. Cho keeping his ult. Massive Corky down. package. Dividing the team off. Has to be careful now. He's divided away from his team. Probably gonna fall, but is it gonna be beneficial? Not really. Massive damage coming out on Cassiopeia, but nothing to benefit on. Unfortunately, Corky may have gotten a little bit too excited with that package. That being said, still four players on Cordia have the ba Elder Dragon and the Baron. Which is going to make it extremely difficult, if possible at all, for UBC to pick up this tower as you can see I'm relinquishing it wisely. Perhaps going for top tower, Cordia pinging mid. Might be an inhibitor for tower trade, not sure if that would be wise though on UBC's part. As you can see they're recalling, they see what they're up to. Do you think it would be, see the question now is, do you want, would you want someone like Cho who has teleport up to be pushing bot? Or do you want to just stay so grouped now as five in fear of getting caught out? Cho does have TP, so I think he could hang on his own. But I don't think, I, don't, I would think that they're less afraid of Cho being on his, who also now I think has that potion you're talking about. Does he? He does not. I think they're less scared of Cho being on his own, but more so Cho not being with them at this point, really. If that makes any sense. Cho is really the immovable team at the moment, but UMBC, still some glimmers of hope into this game. Garen being knocked up. And him gonna go down. No other ways pushing forward, so UMBC could still hang in there for the time being. Gold is slowly starting to trickle in favor of Concordia. Show up to 6.6k HP. Interestingly enough, keeping that vision alive, decided it wasn't worth it. He saw movement coming down from uh, mid lane up towards him and went, ah, it's not worth it to take this pink at the time. Look, we're gonna try and push down this next turret. Cho might be able to teleport in if need be. Yep. I imagine he's gonna hold on to it for now. Baron buff is gone, only relying on Triss damage. Triss damage and Elder. I think Elder War. Cho might be able to get top turret while they're forced to stop in it. You see Garen trying to move top. Garen does have teleport and can teleport bot with Cho, but he has to be careful not to use it first because both and likewise for Cho, both of them are able to deny each other's uh, teleport. Let me see the Walsh is gonna strike. Let's see how much Ouch. Wow, that damage of demolish according to max health, correct? Did half the turret's damage. Who needs Rift Herald when you have a demolished Cho'Gath? Inhib turret in big danger. Triss really putting some siege damage onto that. About quarter way down. Now half. Fair bit of regen on that tower. Cho'Gath gonna just hang here until the turret dies. Have to be careful, because Cho's going for that top turret again. Nope. Cho being, has to be very careful. Garen wisely moving to the Vorpal spike range while Cho is still in turret range. Just barely affecting Cho, but... The bot lane turret's gone. gonna drop. Weezy gonna get engaged on. But Cosmic Radiant's gonna come out in the slimes, but not gonna, gonna help. I don't even affect the slimes to be honest, it seems to affect his dead body puddle. Yeah, kind of weird. Weird interaction right there. Right, really please. Baron coming up again in a minute 10. Can imagine that this is going to be a big fighting point for both teams. Big items being picked up though now on 
UBC, that shutdown gold, so beneficial. Lord Dominic's regard being picked up by Tristana. We see a uh, abyssal vow, or no, not abyssal vow. Where did I see that? What am I talking about? Knight's vow. There we go. Reaching an interesting point in the game where potentially this next Baron fight could decide the game. damage coming out from Concordia onto I'm UMBC. Quickly take this Baron. I don't think UBC gave a contest. Cho'Gath ult's gonna We're going down. So Chains of Corruption gonna go down, but... But that celestial blessing. We see just Jarvan stuck away from his team. Cassio missing that essential ult. This might be over. This she got stunned. Big flash leap taking out Garen, and this is probably game. Very nice flash stun by Capture there to land it on the Cassiopeia and just it's melt her. Cho'Gath has 10 million HP, so I'm pretty sure he could tank it even if they wanted to. And just Corky was left to free hit in the back line. And really not much you can do. Even though Jarvan got a nice cataclysm, he just stuck everyone into it, and unfortunately, that's it. That's all she wrote for UMBC, but as a Concordia student, Concordia's gonna move on to the uh, next round. So they are in the top 16 now, so we'll see where they get placed within the top 8, being a team with 5 wins and 1 loss. So, it'll be interesting to see where they.